Military intervention is not the solution to the ongoing political situation in the country, says President of Team Nigeria for Change, Bestman Nze Jumbo. Even as the camp of the President-elect Asiwaju Bola Tinubu disclosed that they were officially served with copies of the petitions filed at the election tribunal by Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi and his counterpart in the People's Democratic Party Atiku Abubakar. Tonight, we discuss the calls for interim government to bring calm to the issues that may have come with the outcome of the 2023 elections. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. The alleged call by some groups for the military in, to interfere in the ongoing political situation in the country has been described as utterly ridiculous and condemnable. According to political veterans, those who grew up during the military era and who witnessed some of the harrowing experiences of the period will never ever wish for its return to the administration of the country. According to them, all over the world, the appropriate thing to do by those who are aggrieved by the outcome of a democratic process is the court of law, as clearly stipulated in the Constitution of Nigeria and as globally recognized by all nations and the United Nations as well. Also, the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, has asked the Department of State Security, DSS, to identify, arrest and prosecute the persons behind the plot to install an interim government in the country. IPAC said it rejects any attempt to scuttle, subvert, and truncate the nation's emerging democracy by reactionary and retrogressive forces. Recall that the DSS had said that the plan to install interim government in Nigeria is real and therefore warned those behind it to desist from it. Also, the governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong in Abuja, said an interim government to allegedly thwart the inauguration of Bola Tinubu would not work under the watch of President Muhammad Buhari. Lalong said this shortly after an audience with President Buhari at Aso Rock. This comes barely 24 hours after the Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party challenged the Department of State Services to apprehend plotters of the interim national government Let's hear what he has to say. Take a listen. God forbid that. I will always say, God forbid that. Nigerians will always say, God forbid that. Not under uh, the administration of uh, President Buhari, who has been saying it every time, that I believe in democracy. I believe that after my tenure, I want to go and rest. He said it today, that I'm going back to Daura. And I told him that, oh, yes, some of us will still disturb you in Daura. So this man has worked very well. For democracy, he has initiated, laid down the foundation. We work, we elected a president, and some people will still have a dream to even say they will scuttle this democracy. Many people will fight, will fight, fight against it. So those who are still uh, talking about it, I will say they are just dreaming. They are just doing their dreaming. Because those of us who work for this uh, mandate uh, believe that by the grace of God, President Buhari is going to bring a successor, and that successor is already uh, Aswaju Bola Ametinu. Well, we've heard Simon Lalong there talking about the impossibility of this ever happening. We have joining us live to discuss this, uh, Mayokun Ilo, a former governorship aspirant of the APC in Ogun State, and Taiwo Olakwade, a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me here. Okay. Uh, let me begin with you, Mr. Ilo. I'm glad uh, to be on the show with you this evening. Let me begin with Mr. Ilo on, on this issue. They're talking about an interim government. Uh, while a lot of people are condemning the act and some people are condemning uh, the fact that DSS came out to even say it at all without taking any action on whoever... Uh, they might have credible information is fomenting trouble or is going to or is looking for ways to install interim government, interim government and all <coughs> that. Uh, some are saying it's just a distraction that should not even be talked about, but better issues, more weighing issues, more weighty issues rather, should be discussed. 
What is your perspective about what is going on right now? Interim government, really? Do you think it is a possibility in the first place? Well, uh, as Mandela said, everything seems impossible until it is done. So while at the first instance I want to wave it off dismissively, but on second thoughts, I have to agree that uh, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. The things we take for granted. Who would think that uh, Germany, with all its years of democracy, as at December 7th of this 2022, barely three, four months ago, about 25 people were rounded up, arrested, about 130 locations were searched, 5,000 policemen were involved or attempts to scuttle their, their own democracy as it were. It was a, a classic coup d'etat, as they would call it. So if it can happen there, it's happened all over Africa before, uh, even lately in places like Mali, Burkina Faso, and uh, the rest of So you have to be awake to your responsibility. <coughs> you have to ask questions. You have to know that everything that can be done should be done to make sure that this hard won democracy is preserved at all costs. Uh, the people, from my own perspective, who are uh, involved in this, there, there's a class that are being used as their pawns on the chessboard, and those are those who are disgruntled with the results of the last elections. Fine, uh, from time immemorial, elections in Nigeria have always come with uh, recriminations, with uh, con contests, with uh, disagreements, and the rest of it. But that is why we have the courts of law for grievances, you know, to be addressed. It is not up to anybody to take the laws into his or her own hands. But uh, the second class of people are people that actually have the means to form an insurrection in the country. So those who really have the means are the ones plotting. Meanwhile, those who are feeling disgruntled, who feel that, okay, they have the right to organize or to protest, if not well taken care of, the right to protest is guaranteed in the Constitution. But don't be used as pawns in a game of which you know nothing about. Don't be used to scuttle the democracy that at the end of the day, it becomes a, become an ill wind that blows uh, no one any good. So while the court <laughs> uh, is misplaced, it should not be taken uh, lightly. DSS and all the other arms of government should take their duty seriously and uh, dig, dig deep into this and uh, bring everyone under, under the rule of law. Okay, let me also ask you, Lapade, to give your comments on uh, what is going on here. The interim government. <laughs> okay, so tell, give us your comments on, on the issue. Taiwo, can you hear me? Oh, oh, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, go ahead. Give uh, us your comments, please. You asked the question about... Uh, Okay, you, you, you asked the question about uh, uh, the move by some Nigerians asking for interim, interim government. government. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, I must put on record that, uh, yes, I, 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 I was saying that I must put on record that uh, just like the Bledu State Governor said, uh, Mr. Salmon Lailong, the president had made it clear that uh, is not ready to stay one day behind in office after May 29th, 2023. And I'm one of many Nigerians that want to take the president for his words. The man is saying that he's tired. You remember the time he said that he's tired, that he wants to return to his farm in Casina. And uh, I'm not sure the president has changed this position particularly when we have an election, though some people are saying it's not really free, free and free, but we have a president-elect. And uh, truly, uh, if you look at uh, Section 41 of the Criminal Code Act, the word treason, the punishment for treason is death. Why the punishment for treasonable felony is life imprisonment? Maybe people who are making this comment, who are making this agitation, they don't know the implication of what they are, they, are, they, are, they are talking about. Any form of insurrection definitely is against the law, is illegal, 
and it is punishable under the Nigerian Criminal Code Act. And if you also recall, we have seen some prominent Nigerian lawyers like uh, SCN, uh, Mr. Okay, uh, Taiwo, your audio is a little bit uh, not friendly. Um, I do hope that you can connect better with us and we hear you more. Uh, Mr. Elo, let me come back to you. Um, Taiwo just said something, uh, and we heard from Simon Lalong as well, that he met with the president, and the president said that um, uh, it will not happen from all the body language and whatever the president said. He said it will not happen. And the president has said a long time ago that he's tired. He wants to go and rest. Now, this statement might seem to be very decisive. Uh, he has taken a decision that he will not stay a day more. But if you're standing on another divide, you could also see the statement as a statement made by someone who doesn't care. Because if it comes to a problem that maybe the inauguration will not take place, God forbid, like Simon Lalong said, we're saying God forbid. But if it happens that there will be some kind of uh, uprising or some kind of situation where the inauguration may not hold, and the president is saying he cannot stay even one day. What if it needs him to stay one, two days, two weeks, two months beyond May 25? How do you x-ray the statement of the president that no matter what happens, May 29, he's leaving office? Mr. Ilo, please. Yeah. If we take our mind back to when we had President Yara Dua in office, he, at some point he was sick, flown abroad, maybe incommunicado for some time. The, the Senate came up with what we call the doctrine of necessity hmm. that allowed transfer of power to Vice President uh, Goodluck Jonathan at the time. Yeah. There is no condition, President, for not handing over power on May 29th. The president is bound by the oath, oath of office he took eight years ago to leave office not later than May 29th of 2023. That is part one. Part two, an election has been conducted. A winner has been declared. A certificate of return has been issued to that person. That person didn't die. That person is not in communicado. The transition process has commenced as demanded by law. So there is really no room for anyone coming up with the uh, idea of uh, interim national government. It's an aberration in law. Even under uh, the military, the Supreme Court ruled that the interim government of Shonekon at the time was a blatant disregard for the rule of law. You either have a full-blown military dictatorship or you have civilian democracy like we are practicing. There is nothing like interim government. There is no room for it. So for all those clamoring for that, I see them more or less as bad losers who maybe had the means to cause some dramatic change in the system and they are exploring it. But that is why mm -hmm. we have organs of government. Let them do their, their bit. I just want people who are, you know, unknowledgeable in the schemes of power to not allow themselves to be used as pawns in this elaborate game of uh, of chess that are being played by power brokers. Uh, Nigeria is bigger than any individual. It's bigger than any section of the country. It's an agglomeration of people of different ethnic nationalities. We should respect ourselves, respect the constitution that we have in place. Uh, if you have not seen war before, you will think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a ride in the park. War is war. And war doesn't do good for anybody. Ill wind doesn't blow anybody any good. When rain falls, it falls on anybody. You know, not minding whether you, you like it or not. So those are the issues at play. We have a president elect. The process was not perfect. There is no process that is perfect. Even Trump, US might be the oldest democracy in the world. But even now, they are having issues, you know, in involved with Trump's team and the rest of it. Even Trump didn't believe he lost that election. But laws have to be followed. By that January 20th of 2021, by 10 a.m., he was on the Air Force One out of White House. Whatever he, he thinks about the process doesn't matter. Power must be transferred. The, the chairman, Joint Chief of Staff, I remember, he made a statement 
around that time that we, we don't swear allegiance to one person. We swear allegiance to the Constitution. So whether even Buhari likes it or not, by May 29, he ceases to be the president of the country. Thank goodness he has realized that. He knows that Itato, and he has told us that he's not interested. So it's not about whether he's tired or not. The, the Constitution actually makes room for the extension of the term of office of a sitting president in the case of war or general destruction of society in which maybe transfer of power is impossible, which is something like war. Maybe elections could not be held. This is no such situation. And we should not invite anarchy in, in the process that clearly has these demarcations. And uh, redress can be sought through the, uh, the courts of law. I'm sure most of those who had taken part in the election and lost, if you ask Atiku today, he will tell you there's no, nobody should talk about interim national government. If you ask Peter Obi, because he has his business interest, he has a life outside politics. So he doesn't want something that will come in and everybody is hounded into prison. When military came in, uh, was in 1985 or 1983, some people were put on house arrest for years on hand. Is this what we are calling for? So those who are clamoring or thinking uh, calls for interim government is to hand over to a particular person after six months. It's like they are still living in, uh, in dreamland. It's time to wake up. Okay, um, like you said, uh, the process may not have been very uh, per perfect, and there is no proce uh, process that is perfect, like you said, and I agree with you. Uh, but while we are, we are in, this, uh, uh, in this period, in this process of uh, making our democracy good enough, and until the handing over, which is supposed to be on May 29, do you think we're asking the right questions or just behaving like, okay, we have the answers already? Because however we look at it, anything that comes from a process that is not perfect needs some kind of healing afterwards, and then life goes on as it is. Are we asking the right questions? Are we doing the right things to make sure that that healing really comes and we forge ahead as a country or not? Well, uh, we are doing the right things, although more can still be done, more will still be done. This, this presidency is winding down for good or for bad, I hopefully for the better, you know. So uh, it's in a lame dog situation. There's really nothing much. You cannot come with, uh, with major policy issues at this stage. What we need is healing. Sometimes uh, when you have wounds on your leg or on your arms, Time heals those wounds. There is the element of time. And uh, the president-elect, to all intents and purposes, has you know, given out the only branch to his uh, opponents. He has asked for an inclusive government. He has talked about competence. He has talked about the things he wants to do. There are more things that could be done. It is now up to those who lost today not to throw the baby out with the bath water. There is always time to run again, even when you lose. How many times did Buhari con contest the elections before he eventually became president. It's, it's not every time that the moment you ask for something is given to you. Power is never serve a la carte. People struggle for power. So it's a good thing that maybe Peter Obi too has found out, okay, more things needed to be done. The the thing is, is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So he has tried for the last eight months trying to maybe reach out to the different parts of the country. His message may not resonate as widely as he wants it today. But if he keeps the faith, he might just have some way in the future where we'll find out what he, whatever he's looking for. So power, power, as people will say, comes from God. I, I agree partially with that statement. Uh, but at the same time, we should also realize that we, the peace we have won, some people have died for it. We should not throw it. We should not handle it with levity. We should not uh, be cantecross. We should not uh, do the kind of fight that we we'll do and uh, we put everything on the table. At the end of the day, everybody loses. That is not what we are looking for. Uh, the generation where we belong to, we, we've had children. We have people ahead of us. We have people behind us. I remember my experiences during some crisis in Lagos. Uh, I think during the answers, I, it wasn't all outright war, but it's not something I, I prayed to, to God to witness again. There was a kind of miscommunication between me and my own parents, and I wasn't really happy about it. My mom called for me because of the state of affairs. I couldn't venture out. Imagine if I was out of the country. Imagine if uh, it was it was really war, and for months you can't reach the loved ones that you have. 
These are just snippets of things that can happen. If you ask those who witnessed the civil war of Nigeria, 1967 to 1970, if they tell you, if they sit you down and tell you stories, you don't even want to see anything that resembles uh, anarchy. That is that is my own admonition to whoever is calling for anarchy, because call for interim national government is actually a call towards anarchy in the country. It should be rejected. Okay, as we as we go on to this uh, healing process, what are some of the things that you would recommend that we as a country we do, and apart from only the political actors, they have a a greater role to play, a greater part to play in this uh, whole thing. But what do we need to do? or start doing to make sure this healing comes. You have said the president-elect has, you know, extended an olive branch to the people who lost, or who, f yeah, who lost, let's, let's use that, who lost, and, or the major political actors in this whole thing. So what can we do for this healing to be fast, for this healing to be, to be complete before the day of handing over? And even beyond. Well, yes. uh, those who lost already have recourse to the law. You know, I don't begrudge anybody for approaching the courts. Even Buhari approached the courts on each of the three or four occasions in which he lost the presidential elections. It was his right to do, and he showed him as a true democrat. The moment the Supreme Court pronounces, everybody should go home. But trying to set up uh, the CJN, the Supreme Court, the system is what I'm up against, you know. <clears throat> There have been some uh, social media activism and social media war that people have been fighting. Those kind of rhetoric should be toned down. You know, we don't want DSS now looking for people on social media. Whoever it is that is, you know, some of the people that are instigating the crisis on social media, because we should not take those lightly. Uh, even maybe not even in the country, but because of the, you know, the anonymity involved in social media life, people can be instigating things from behind the scene towards some known or known ends. So that is that. So we are, as individuals, we should know that, okay, this country belongs to all of us. Whatever it is we are fighting for is not what the, the blood of any Nigerian, it was actually a former president that said that, that his ambition is not what the blood of any Nigerian. So the same should be said in churches, in mosques, among, you know, whoever it is that is conversing, that we can disagree. But we should know that at the end of the day, the love of the country should be uppermost in our hearts. People have been demarketing Nigeria and, and going about it as if it's something. People have been writing petitions to ICC. People have been talking about uh, using one person or the other. Uh, is this our president? Is this our... This? Somebody has won. You know, the, 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 the same way in which you have the rights. At the end of the day, your right is one vote during elections. The other person whether educated or uneducated, as the same, that, that's the beauty of democracy. So when the people speak, everybody should say, okay, the minority we have their say, but the majority we always carry the day. So that is what has happened. We should respect it. Another four years will come. We never know. We've had minority uh, person rule this country before, in the person of uh, Ebele Jonathan. The whole country supported him. He became president. He, he became vice president, even in his own election, he became president. So that is to tell you that at the end of the day, with the right language, anybody can become anything in Nigeria. Democracy, the best democracy, according to our law, is better. The worst democracy, he said, is better than the, worst, the best uh, military rule. That is to tell you, for, we should take it from those who have gone before us, that liberty has a price, and vigilance is the price of it. Okay, uh, let, let me try Olapade again. Uh, before now, the audio was not very good. That's why we had to just put you on hold. Olapade, are you back now with us? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, okay, thank you very much. It's, it's, it's better now. Um, we're talking about the healing process before we go into other things. And we'll, I've just asked uh, uh, Mr. Ilo here to give us his own perspective and tell us some of the pointers he would like to see so that we will have this healing fast and, uh, and complete before the handing over <laughs> and beyond the handing over date. So I'd like to also hear from you, what are some of the things that you would recommend that we start to do as a nation uh, to, make, to bring about this healing that we so desire right now? Well, uh, for me, I expect uh, the president-elect 
to form a government of national unity. I think if the president elect who starts on that uh, trajectory, it may douse the tension that we are having in the country at the moment. A government of national unity in which competence will also be the order of the day. There are Nigerians in different parts of the country who are competent to be ministers, who are competent to be director generals, who are competent to be MDs and the uh, GM of different parastatas, ministries, as the case may be. Uh, with the fallout of this election, I expect that the president-elect will want to consider a government of national unity. After that has been said, I also want to put on record that, uh, like uh, the earlier speaker said, uh, we cannot throw away the baby with the bathwater. And we have seen cases in the past in this country where people who some felt lost out at the election and approached the court, the tribunal, to retrieve their mandates, eventually they got back their mandates since they believed uh, they won that electoral process. It is on record that former governor of um, those states, Olusha Gumimiko, won back his mandate. He retrieved his mandate at the election tribunal. It is on record that the former governor of Oshun State, Raoul Farengoshola, also retrieved his mandate at election petition tribunal. Also, of recent, Governor Op Uzodima of Imo State also got back his mandate at election tribunal. Who says anyone who felt aggrieved? by the outcome of this election, cannot approach election petition tribunal with concrete, convincing evidence, documented evidence, and approach the court. That's why we have the judiciary. And I want to advise that we should also have trust in our judicial system. They have done it in the past, and who says, in the aftermath of this election, people who felt like, oh, I was cheated, I was rigged out, I was uh, not given the mandates given to me by the people, go to the courts and, you know, convince the courts why you should be the one declared as the winner in the long run. But for somebody to be, you know, uh, for some people rather to be, uh, um, uh, to be instigating violence or insurrection. Imagine that when we have a chaos, when we have a breakdown of law and order in the country, and eventually in your mandate is restored, who are the people that you want to govern? In this election, we had cases of governors who made an attempt to return for second time that were defeated. In this election, we have governors who have served two terms of eight years but made an attempt to go to the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, who were defeated. I can give you two, three, no, two, three, four cases. The governor of Benin State, Samuel Autumn, made an attempt to, to, to get to the Senate. He was defeated. The governor of uh, Plato State, Samuel Lalo, made an attempt to get to the Senate after completing two terms as governor. He was defeated. That's the sitting governors. The governor of... Uh, of Kese uh, Kuyazu, uh, Abia State. He also made an attempt to go to the Senate. A sitting go incumbent governor, if I why, also made an attempt. These are governors who people believe are powerful, particularly when you talk about the power of incumbency. But because of the transparency in this electoral who says they couldn't, you know, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't win the election, and that shows. Hello, Taiwo. Okay, uh, we will reconnect with Taiwo as soon as possible. Uh, but let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Ilo. Um, you contested to be a governor in your state, Ogun State 
uh, even though you didn't make it, but I'm sure you had programs planned for your state. I'm sure you had a lot of, vi uh, you had vision for your, for your state. And this question I'm about to ask you is what we have been talking about, whether we can separate uh, these two things I'm calling now. The president-elect said, when people were calling for a government of national unity, which both of you have just talked about now, he said he favors competence over unity, that Nigeria does not need a, a, a country or a government of national unity. Or instead, Nigeria needs a government of national competence. Maybe I do not understand these words. Can we have a country that will explore the competence of its people without having a government that seeks to unite the people, that has an agenda also as a government of national unity? Can we separate these two from each other? Mr. Ilo. Yeah, the, it depends on which perspective you are looking at the issues from. Uh, the fact that he prioritized competence over so-called unity does not mean that he does not believe in unity. You have to look at the man's uh, antecedents. Uh, if there's anybody that is liberal, that is progressive among the governors, you know, since 1999, it will be the president-elect uh, Bola Tenobu. He, he, he was the one that was telling everyone when they were asking for a CV, go to Lagos, see what I have done. You know, mm -hmm. it, it takes a level of confidence to tell anybody that. And it's, his actions actually spoke volumes. You know, those who believed in him, believed in his mentorship, believed in his leadership, believed in his network, they, they were there all around for him. And that if there was anything he had that made him stand head and shoulder above his uh, rivals at the time. It was, it was those, those things from the people that worked for him that went on to become who is who in Nigeria. You know, reference points for leadership and uh, good behavior and, uh, you know, pragmatic leadership in public office. They were his, under his tutelage. So if he's talking about competence, you have to know that, okay, does, does that mean he does not believe in the government of national unity? Even the, the, the talk about government of national unity it depends on the perspective from which you are coming. You know, anybody can use that to tell you, okay, bring every Tom, Dick, and Harry under your government just to be seen as being uh, pro-Nigeria or pro-unity. I don't also believe in that, you know. But that does not mean that every region does not have competent people. So it might be telling you, I will look for competent people from every region. I'm not obligated to pick my political rivals and put them in my cabinet just because I want to be seen as, as a, you know, running a government of national unity. That shouldn't be what... You have to look for people whose ideologies uh, align with your own to work with you. You know, if, if it's your opponent and you feel they are ready and willing to work with you, so be it. But it's not under obligation. The constitution doesn't require him to, uh, to appoint his political opponents into, into office. The, the president elect on being sworn, sworn in, when you become president, you have at least about six to 8,000 appointments that you should make within a four year period. So he, can, he has the priority, the prerogative to put anybody in any office as long as he believes that he will be able to deliver. So he's, he's not <coughs> uh, obligated to give anybody that position just for the sake of being his political opponent or for the sake of uh, optics alone. You know, at the end of the day, he, he has to answer to the Nigerian people. If there's any, you know, uh, insight or peeping I can see from, from, his, uh, from his body language and from interacting with people close to him, uh, he's going to hit the ground running. Maybe partly because he has to prove skeptics wrong and partly because that is the nature of who he is, you know. So you might see him nominating his cabinet even before being sworn in to tell you that I'm not going to wait for six months or three months if I nominate my ministers, he has pencil down people that we do. Some people think, okay, uh, the president is supposed to be this athletic or this whatever. We are not trying to elect the same boat here. We are looking for somebody who can manage the complex 
uh, project called Nigeria and put important people, put uh, competent people in, in the right office, square pegs in square holes, as they will say, round pegs in round holes, so that Nigeria can move forward. We, we've languished long enough in the backwaters of development. So if for once we get somebody who understands what it means to, to put an economy first, to put food on the, you know, do policies that will put food and put unemployment away for good, at least reduce it to a bare minimum. Why should we be having 33% unemployment in this day and age? UK has about 3 4%, they are complaining. So people need to be put to work. If you ask me as an economist, I will tell you for free that 70% of the problem we are having in this country is on account of unemployment. Even more than any, it's not even corruption, it's unemployment. If government can fix unemployment, the issue of terrorism will die a natural death. If you go to work in the morning and you come back 6, 7 p.m. and you are already tired, if somebody tells you, let's go and make trouble, my brother, you will say, no, I need to rest. And if you work for a year or two, you begin to think, what car can I buy? What tricycle can I buy to you know become a second leg for me? Those are the things that give people hope in the government and hope in the future of their country. When those indices are, are missing, people begin to think of a crime and other things that are not befitting of the normal human being. Okay, Tyro is back here with us, and we're trying to analyze um, uh, what the president-elect said. He said he has no uh, intention of building a government of national unity over a government of national competence. He would rather choose a, a, a government of national competence uh, over uh, unity. So we're trying to analyze this uh, uh, statement. How do you see it? <coughs> Well, like I said, uh, when I was talking about uh, uh, the need for uh, uh, government of national unity, the second leg of what I said was uh, the need to also not compromise merits and standards. I made reference to that. And I said in all parts of the country, maybe south-south, south-west, south-east, uh, and not waste, not any part of the country, there is no part that cannot produce somebody of high integrity that will serve as minister, that will serve as DGs of parastatas, that will serve as MDs of government agencies. And you know, in the spirit of uh, the federal character, it is also expected that uh, the ministers will also be appointed in each state of the federation we have 36 states and the fct each state is expected to also nominate a minister in the cabinet of the president elect we, we know that are ministries that has minister and minister for states but uh, 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 and then a uh, federal character is that each state will have a minister representing that state in the federal cabinet. So perhaps I expect because of the tension in the land, the government of national unity is not there, is not there, is not something unexpected. And like Ashwa just said when he was asked this similar question, what is serious? But we need to appoint people based on merit that we need merit now to be able to uh, uh, put up a necessary through reform of our country to be able to uh, correct the mistakes of the past and, the, and to be able to also what the man did as governor of Lagos State within the eight years that he served. We have people who are from different parts of the country. We have people who are outsiders. We have people who, who are of the Igbo uh, origin in the government of, in the cabinet of Tinubu as governor of Lagos State. And that has been the tradition, that has been the trajectory since it left office in 2007. There is no government that we have had in Lagos State that do not have people from other tribes. And that shows the spirit of national unity, that shows the spirit of a sense of belonging for every part of the country, for every religion, and for every tribe. And that's exactly what we need. We need things that will bring us together and not things or initiative 
that will divide us more. Because in the in the recent past, we have we have been divided. If truth must be told, so whatever we need to do, whatever Ashwa did, the president elect needs to do now is to be able to also unite us more and uh, ensure that uh, we have a spirit of brotherhood, a spirit of uh, sportsmanship, and that must come into play so that we can have a Nigeria that uh, we all can have rest. We don't need a Nigeria where some people will be uh, talking about uh, insurrection, talking about breakdown of law and order. We don't need that. We have had issues that the president elect need to quickly settle down and resolve. And I'm happy when Mr. Dele Alake was asked about uh, how soon are we likely to see a government form, a cabinet form by the president elect. He said in three weeks we will see a cabinet list sent to the National Assembly uh, for approval. And I'm also happy that uh, uh, about a few days ago, the president also gave his accent to some bills uh, passed by the National Assembly. And one of them was uh, the need for the president-elect to also submit his time for three months or so. And I'm not too, uh, I'm not too surprised about that. Because when the president, uh, when President Muhammad Buhari came into office, it took him about six months to name his cabinet. And Nigerians were wondering, uh, uh, is this selecting people from elsewhere? But <laughs> eventually, uh, when, the, when the cabinet list came out, it was these same people that we all know. So people were wondering, why, why does it take him so long? Six months. Six months. From four years, that's about half a, half a year. Why does it take him so long to name a cabinet? So we do not expect to see a repeat of that in the government of Ashwagu. As soon as he takes the mantle of leadership, Nigerians are expecting that he will eat the ground running immediately after May 29th, that he takes the mantle of leadership president, from President Muhammad Buhari. So we want to see a cabinet that will be formed immediately so that each person can know that they have the responsibility to quickly put things into shape so that Nigerian can immediately begin to see uh, the dividend of democracy, the electoral, electoral promises that Ashwaju made. We want to see it come into pass at, at, at the speed of light. Nigerians don't want to wait, particularly because of the fact that uh, uh, the fallout of this election. So Ashwaju has the task to ensure that he settled down in office and begin to deliver on his electoral, electoral promises to Nigerians, irrespective of the religion or wherever you have come from. Okay, um, let, let me just, uh, let's just take this uh, few minutes that we have left and share in the experience of Mayokun Ilo. Uh, you are a former governorship aspirant of the APC in Ogun State. Uh, my question to you now, because we're interrogating the strength of our democracy and we have to look at all perspectives. When politicians go into election, maybe there are some things that they need to take along, as it were, and maybe there are things that they need to expect. Uh, and it, it will be a good thing for you to share with us uh, who the person who has contested in an election and lost, but you are taking it in good faith. What was your experience like? Because when we talk democracy, we talk about the politicians themselves and we talk about the people. So what was your experience like? What do you think politicians who are going into uh, politics, maybe for the first time, or maybe trying their hands out on elective positions for the first time, what should they expect? What should they go into that playing field with? Let's get from your experience, please, Mr. Ilo. Yeah, I think I would just say, Politics is, is a numbers game. Politics is, an, uh, is a game of interest. It's a game of loyalty for some. It's a game of uh, trying to, to break the odds, as it were. Sometimes it's pure luck, you know, when you find yourself in some certain position. But it's something that is rewarding if, if it works out your way. If it doesn't work out your way, you get some experiences about dealing with human beings. You know, there's a the, the reason why people have been in public offices. When when they leave, there's all this rush by private sector companies to hire them. 
because uh, based on the network that they have gotten while they went into politics, based on the kind of insights they have about how public sector works, because it, it drops off on interactions uh, that you can use as a private sector company or individual. So that, that said, uh, Nigerian democracy is still fragile. Nigerian democracy is still built around uh, people rather than institutions to a large extent. But that said, uh, we would rather be a toddler or a teenager than, than be in the camp of military, military boys. Uh, democracy takes time to mature, uh, but a lot depends on the strength of character of the people that are there part time. You know, uh, thank God for, for judiciary. Even under the military, we had strong judiciary. So we cannot afford to lose faith just because something didn't go our way, you know, at the first instance. Uh, I, I read the story of uh, Peter Obi, you know. He, it was the courts that made him governor, so to say. His mandate was taken away by PDP at the time, and he went to court. He said he was in a board meeting when they called him and said, this meeting cannot continue with you. The courts have just declared you winner. You know, that tells me he left his uh, fate in the hands of the judiciary. So, and judiciary came true for him. That doesn't mean that that same thing will happen now. Or if judiciary didn't rule your way, that means the judiciary is corrupt or the CJN has been compromised. No, we have to believe, as it should be, that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. So sometimes what you get may not look like uh, justice. The judgment has to be respected, especially when it's coming from the Supreme Court. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to force feed or force direct, you know, the course of uh, nature, the course of judiciary. We, we disagree to agree. It may not be in our way today. It will always be in our way tomorrow. You know, sometimes we defer, you know, to superior judgment. Somebody became, I think it's in Enugu, uh, one of the new senators that contested against the undermining. It wasn't the guy. It was his elder brother that was supposed to contest, but the guy was gruesomely murdered. LP decided, okay, who is best to give? He said, okay, give it to his younger brother. Now his younger brother is a senator elect. If you look at the story in uh, Osho, uh, Osho State too, you know, we lost uh, one senator, Adeleke, that was supposed to run for governor. Then APC denied, maybe ACN at the time, denied uh, the younger brother that people wanted to replace Senator Adeleke, who they felt was poisoned somehow. You know, the truth of, of it, we don't know up to now. You know, at the end of the day, APC gave it to somebody else, or ACN gave it to somebody else. He fought back, and now he's governor, you know, subject to Supreme Court rulings. Another thing I need to point out is the, the preponderance of cases uh, that we usually have these days is it's an issue for me. I was listening to the great uh, erudite lawyer, uh, Falano, you know, uh, not long ago. And he was talking about having thousands of cases, you know, like 120 cases at the Supreme Court now waiting for judgment, all of them political. You know, political uh, cases crowd out other cases, some that border on life and death of the defendants. This should not be the case. Nigeria is the most litigated country, uh, country in terms of elections in the world, we should try and scale all these things down. INET should put his house in order. The Nigerians too should keep the faith. We are the one making INET to, to maybe with money bags and the rest of it to go in the direction that they are going. You know, right. inducement should stop. So all these things are things that we can do to maybe strengthen our democracy okay. in the interest of everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayokun Ilo, uh, former governorship aspirant of the APC Ogun State. Thank you for coming on the program today. And we'll also say thank you. Thank you to Taiwo Olakwadi for joining us on the show this uh, evening. Well, we are going to draw the curtain on uh, plus politics uh, on that note, but we will leave you with the highlights of the week. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Have a good evening. And look at the youthful energy that we have that is doing nothing, you know. So I'm just giving you a few examples of how if we increase production, then the cost of living in Nigeria will fall. And not only that, the other side of it is that as we increase production, 
We are creating jobs, employment for the young men and women who are lazy about not doing nothing. Because labor is a factor of production. And we are not using labor in Nigeria. So many graduates leave class, and maybe a class of 100 uh, will graduate. Maybe about two to five of them will get a job. The rest of them are just doing nothing. Imagine if we have 95 of them doing working immediately, and just five of them still looking for work. You can imagine how much production that will be happening in Nigeria. So what can we do? The incoming government, because the Buhari government is already on the way out. We can't tell them anything again. So to set the agenda for the incoming government, they need to take care of the basic things. Increase electricity, bring in ray, boost agriculture with mechanization, take care of law enforcement so that uh, some militants don't come and drive farmers away from their farms. Those, those kind of basic things, you will see that Nigeria will take off and will start heading to becoming a developed nation. One election in the U.S. in, 19, in 2008, what happened? Some people in 13 states moved the motion of secession from the, from, the, from the Confederation. It was an open thing. Some people from 13 states were trying to quote the Constitution that they can succeed because they never liked Obama, a black man, to be president. So if chooses to tear his old passport, unused passport, in the name of being angry, that, is, that, that person is insignificant. Remember, I've left Nigeria. So why is he carrying your passport? You are abroad. Why not stay in Nigeria? We are not in Nigeria. Are we fools? We are aching a living out of Nigeria. I've not left this country. All that I've made in life is in Nigeria. I've not left Nigeria. I only go out of Nigeria for holidays. So all that I've made in Nigeria, all that I've made in my life is in Nigeria. People have made it big in Nigeria. So if you choose to be a refugee abroad because you are lazy, you cannot act out to live in Nigeria, and you are abroad, and you are instigating your country and telling your passport, that is your responsibility. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are insignificant. Just like uh, 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 that statement, Borija is talking about living in Nigeria, he's one man. And people have left. And we are all here. As I'm driving now, there are, there are people who are walking on the street, acting out to live in. Go to the UK, there are people who are walking on the street. Go to, I've, I've traveled wide in this, in this, in, 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 in this, in this world. Go to, go to, go to, uh, even the most prosperous country, uh, talking about Singapore. You see people walking on the streets. So if anybody felt that he was appointed about the election and then he tore his passport, of what value is that to the person? To, I mean, I mean to Nigerians. We are over 200 million. And if people, people choose, people change nationality. Every day people are asking to become Nigerians. People are planning to become Nigerians. So, so people are planning to become British to become Australian, to become American. So it's a free world. But what I'm saying, in essence, is this. In terms of capacity, mm. there's no... But the judge is not important to talk about capacity. Because now I say, let's not go there. He was governor, he was governor of, of Ondo State. Please, let him name his... What, let him name his legacy in, in Ondo State. And I'm sure a lot of people will name more 200 legacies in Lagos that he left, even after he left office. Mm. So you're talking about capacity. So uh, for me, we're talking about a healing process. And it is, and he reached out. Balatinibu reached out after the election. Don't get me wrong, I'm not partisan, I'm not in any party. He reached out to his opponent and said they should join him. And what happened in Lagos? Balatinibu issued a statement. So this is something we are saying here that his, 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 uh, his men are attacking others. What of others are attacking him every day? People are digging out all kinds of things so from, the, from, from the real to the mundane, and they want his men to keep quiet. Look, when truth, we're, 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 we're in an internet age, we're in a social media age, then when things keep running on social media, and we're in a perverse press, uh, press age, that if things keep running and there's no rebuttal, it becomes the truth. Uh, should be done, uh, for me, going forward to postpone such kind of reoccurrence is for us to have a deterrence mechanism. You know, the reason why people go and sign such kind of thing and they don't have, uh, there's no deterrence mechanism is because there's no consequence. It will start having consequence management or an effective punishment to people who sign such accord and go against such accord. For example, I go to sign that, hey, my party is going to maintain uh, everything signed in this document. We're not going to instigate violence. We're not going to say something that's going to cause the state of the state of arrest. And I go against such signature. I think there should be a sanction. Maybe I should be suspended from participating in any political office or maybe be withdrawn, just like what is happening in the United States as it is now, where the people are trying to hold Donald Trump accountable for the incident that transpired in Washington, D.C. 
So we should have government uh, an institution in place that will hold these guys accountable so that they will understand that, hey, they are not bigger than Nigeria. They are not bigger than this country. Because I tell you, Popri Ogaji, that somebody is lying to us. Some people are lying to us in this country. And I know the people that are lying to us. They are the politicians. Until now, we never knew that the Igbo, uh, you, you, if your mother is not a, 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 an Igbo woman, or your father is not an Igbo man, or a Yoruba man, or whatever it may be, or maybe tribal, tribal difference, you cannot hold a position. That is tribal brutality. That is ethnocentric brutality. It is very, very wrong, and we need to cut that off from our uh, uh, political space. Okay. So we need to identify those who are lying to us, which I personally have identified the liars, of this, to, to, uh, the liars in this uh, scenario. The politicians are lying to us. The Igbos are good people. The Yorubas are good people. The Hausas are good people. I'm from the Asian Kingdom. The Asians are good people.